Hey everyone and welcome to CTN Videos. Today we have an exclusive overview of the new Surface RT tablet for you. Ready? Let's begin. Microsoft first unveiled the Surface tablets back in June at an ultra-secret Apple-style event. The tablet with its keyboard covers, Windows 8 interface, and Office applications intrigued reporters and consumers alike. However, all were forced to wait another three to four months before the Surface would actually release. Today, however, is the mass launch of the Surface tablet and of Windows 8, so you can finally get your hands on the device. To begin this overview, why don't we ta start by talking about the Surface's hardware. It's not an easy feat to make a tablet that looks or feels different from its competitors, yet Surface is indeed quite distinctive on both fronts. The exterior of the tablet is a matte surface that looks dark and feels quite strong and durable. It's constructed using Microsoft's Vapor Mag process, which relies on vapor deposition to create this distinctive tactility which really feels nice. And the material feels amazing in the hand with the sides angling outward, creating a facade slightly wider than in the rear. As far as display goes, the Surface tablet has a 169 screen, which is pretty wide but not very tall. This display uses Microsoft's ClearType technology, which supposedly produces better looking graphics even against displays with much higher resolution, like of course the fourth generation iPad. The colors and blacks on the 10.6 inch screen do look stunning, but all the technology in the world can't make up for pixels that aren't there. At the size of the Surface screen, its 1366 by 768 resolution leaves much to be desired, and even though things are sharp, text in some of the starker elements of the Microsoft's new user interface would clearly benefit from a higher resolution display. On to performance. In terms of general UI responsiveness, touch response, speed, and frame rate of the tile interface, Windows desktop, and most basic OS functionality, the Surface is incredibly speedy. Switching between apps is fast and fluid, organizing and navigating the start screen feels snappy, and live tiles flip and update smoothly and as expected. Many of the first-party apps, particularly Internet Explorer in the new application, are particularly good, but others aren't quite so good. The native email application, for instance, can be slow to update and unresponsive to touch on a regular basis. Other apps, both first and third-party, could be slow to open, then stall or crash altogether. Next, battery. Battery life is inconsistent and impressive on the surface. Microsoft claims that users can get somewhere in the vicinity of around 8 hours on a single charge in mixed use. I actually think that the battery is better than that. On average so far, users have been able to put the Surface through a full day of relatively heavy use, video playback and streaming, document editing, lots of web browsing, app downloads, game playing, email, twitter and more, and still had some charge left. Actually, battery life on the Surface seems more akin to an iPad than to a laptop, which makes sense given the ARM architecture. So don't worry if you're needing the Surface for extended periods. The tablet should come through. Now I'm going to talk about the main selling point of the tablet, touch cover and type cover. Surface is the first tablet to fully integrate keyboard cases, hybrid products that serve as protection for the tablet, and a full-fledged physical keyboard. The touch cover has been more visible in Microsoft's advertising of the Surface, and rightly so. Not only is it a very kind, a new kind of product for tablets, but the company is offering it in a variety of bright colors that are extremely eye-catching. While both the touch cover and the type cover snap onto the bottom of the tablet using a set of pogo connectors and a strong magnet, the touch cover is unique in that it is a physical keyboard with no moving parts. Instead, there are a set of raised keys on the soft material-like surface. And not just keys, but a fully functional multi-touch trackpad with two buttons. On a desk or flat surface, the touch cover works reasonably well. It doesn't come close to replicating a physical tactile keyboard, but it does do a good job of reminding you where your fingers need to be. It's easy to mistype words at first, but you'll soon get used to it if you use the cover often. 
The type cover is a different story altogether. It's one of the best portable keyboards ever. Like the touch cover, it functions as a screen protector, but unlike the touch cover, it has a full set of great feeling tactile keys. I would even go so far as to say that typing on it is akin to working on a MacBook Air. The next topic I'll be talking about is admittedly a weak point for the Microsoft Surface, software and apps. Although Microsoft provides a stripped down version of Microsoft Office, you'll be hard pressed to find any decent apps in the Windows Store other than that. Popular apps such as Facebook, Foursquare, Dropbox, Mint, PageOnce, TripIt, NPR, New York Times, Angry Birds, Draw Something, Temple Run, Spotify, Springpad, Amazon, Instapaper, Flipboard, Steam, Instagram, Nook, Zinio, and Ardio are missing from the store, but I guess it can only go up from here. Needless to say though, I would not recommend the Microsoft Surface for you if you're looking for a tablet that has access to a hardy ecosystem of apps. Give the Windows Store a couple more years and it will probably be thriving, but right now it's really not complete. My final topic for this overview is interface. Many users were concerned that Windows 8, and more specifically Windows RT, would be a cumbersome operating system that required a lot of time to learn, but I am happy to report that these fears were unfounded. If you don't know how Windows RT works, it's really simple. Upon booting up and signing into the Surface, you're presented with a list of colorful tiles representing apps either by square icons or rectangular live spaces. Those spaces are also shortcuts to apps, but they display information like recent messages or tweets to you, weather conditions, and calendar events, and so on. Widgets, basically. The list of tiles can be scrolled left to right, and you can make as many groupings of tiles as you want. If you swipe down from the top or up from the bottom of the Surface display, you will get a context menu for in-app options or functions. If you swipe all the way from the top to the bottom, you quit an app you're in. Flicking your screen quickly along the left side of the screen towards the right will bring, uh, will flip through apps you have open while swiping slowly and pulling back will bring up a list of all the apps you have currently open. Finally, you can pull an open app onto either side of the app you're currently in and run that application side by side with another kind of smartphone-like display next to a larger tablet display. That's especially useful for things like Twitter, mail, or music apps. All these gestures may sound complex, and they are to me as well, but in 10 minutes it feels totally natural. They're good ideas, and they feel fresh, useful, and intuitive. Windows RT certainly isn't as basic or immediately understandable as iOS, but it's extremely clever and charming in its own right. You'll like it despite yourself. To wrap up this overview, I want to say that I think Microsoft Surface is every inch as good as other current tablets. From its crisp display, to its stellar performance, to its long battery life, to its touch and type covers, Surface delivers a premium tablet experience matched only by the iP Apple iPad. Although its app ecosystem is not all there yet, Surface has the potential to grow and expand rapidly. Priced at $499 for a 32GB model, $599 for a 32GB model with type cover, and $699 for a 64GB model with type cover, Surface is definitely on the premium edge of the tablet market, but I think it belongs there. Anyway, if you want to tell me your opinions about the new Surface tablet, feel free to leave a comment below. We're always interested to hear your opinion here at CTN. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like it. Every like means a lot. For more videos like this one, just subscribe to our channel. It's CTN Technology News. Lastly, if you want a whole bunch more technology news, rumors, overviews, reviews, tutorials, and much more, visit CTN's website at ctntechnews.com. See you next time.